Hello and welcome to the fifth of my Festive Fridays and Christmas in July series. I will be bringing you a variety of Christmas projects from cards to tags to 3D objects and home decor. So let's move down to the craft table and I will share with you today's project. Today I'm going to be using this gorgeous stamp set, Have a Hoot, that is going to be featuring in the new August to December mini catalogue. I will be using a, one of the papers from the Plaid Tidings 6 inch by 6 inch designer series paper. Today is the last of my cards featuring the note cards and envelopes. I will be cutting my 6 inch by 6 inch designer series plaid paper at the 3 and a quarter inch mark here along the bottom and then turn it and again at four and three quarters. So four and three quarters is just there. Okay. This size will fit perfectly onto my card and I will attach down with combo adhesive. For the banner on my card, I've cut a piece of mossy meadow card to two inches by three and a half or five centimetres by nine centimetres. I'm just going to measure that up where I would like my banner to the top of the inside of my banner to be. So I'm just going to mark that one there. Now you can either draw from corner to corner and corner to corner or you can use your tailored tag punch which is this beautiful diamond shape on the top there. And if you place this into your punch, make sure that it's even. So you get your pencil mark on the point there, and then you get the same distance into each corner. And when you've lined up, give it half a pinch, and then you can see that the edges are even and your pencil point is in the middle and pop that down. Okay, so there's my banner complete and ready for my card. So I'll set that to one side. Here I have lined up my Stamparatus ready with two pieces of watercolour paper. The first one is for stamping the owls and that's going to be two inches by two and a half inches or five centimetres by six and a half centimetres. And here we just have a scrap of the, with the watercolour card. Uh, it's just been lined up straight on the, on the, along the grid lines on the grid paper here. Um, and I'm going to take the stamps out of my stamp set here. I'm going to be taking this one and then the Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas will line up on the bottom here. It wants to be in line with the bottom of the card, although we can trim that down later. And then the owls with the mistletoe will be featured on this piece up here. Like so. When you're happy with the positioning of those, you'll close the Stamparatus and pick up those stamp sets. I've already positioned these onto the Stamparatus, just using my magnets, one on each piece, and making sure that they are going to line up. Now I will use my stays on. We will be watercolouring today, those images, and so I want to use my stays on ink pad. If you use the Memento, it can be inclined to run a little bit. So I'm just gently tapping on here. I should first say that I do use a a stamp case underneath just to keep that level so that the stamparatus doesn't go downhill and it makes it easier to stamp on a flat surface. So that's for the actual image and this one is for the sentiment. So I'll just close that stamparatus and press down firmly on my images and that one needs a little bit more ink. Because the watercolour paper is not an even surface it has te a slight texture to it it is best to ink this up more than once. So the images in the centre of there actually need a little bit more ink. You could see on there that that hasn't fully caught that. So I just press in the middle a little bit heavier just to make sure that that gets the ink onto the paper. Now those images, I'm happy with those images, they're lovely and clear. So I'll remove those 
leave my magnets on here and I will leave this, um, the ink on there will close onto here and I will clean those later. You need to clean stays on immediately because stays on will do what it says on the tin and it will actually stay on. So here's my first image and here's my smaller image. Now whilst the ink is allowing to dry just that little bit longer, I'm going to take my small trimmer and I'm going to trim this down to the size piece that we want to actually have on our card. So with the, the smaller, smaller trimmers, you can actually take that down quite close to the image. There's the first one. And then keeping it perfectly straight. I'll turn that around actually. You can see when your image is completely covered. And also, just to point out, there's actually a lip on these trimmers. Most trimmers will have a lip there. This won't quite catch that, it's not near enough. But on that black line, the other side, if I line it up on that black image, then that will be perfect. Okay, just for that particular image. And there we have our sentiment. Okay, so they can go, I'll save that piece for another card. And there's my image. I am going to just butt this flat flush with one edge and snip that there. And then this end, I will put a little flag on here. I'll use my paper snips and I will snip this to the center. Bring this to the camera for you. I have snipped into the center and then I'll take my snips from the corner edge up to the center mark and then from this side up to the center mark from the corner into the center. Hope you can see that okay on the camera. And there is the little flag. I have moved the camera in a little bit closer so that you can see me watercolouring this gorgeous image. I will be using our, aqua, uh, our water painters. Okay, and these are now coming in a, a set of three and there's three different nibs on the top here. We have the fine one that I will be using today. Yeah, fine tip. And then we also have a wide nib a fat nib and also a a wide flat flat um, brush here this one has been stained obviously by using the blue some of the certain colors will stain even though it's been washed and it is clean they will just take on a slight um, coloring of the ink pigment so here is my fine tip and I will be using my watercolor pencils today here I, I keep them again in a in a wide case, stamping case. I have both sets of pencils in here, um, together with some stamp and blends, blender pens, and a wink of Stella brush. Okay, so using my water brush today, I'm going to start by doing a, a wash for the sky. So I've brought on a piece of folded kitchen paper, and I will squeeze through my aqua painter just to make sure that the nib is damp. So I'm gonna take, this is the Bermuda Bay, watercolor pencil and I'm going to be taking my my ink straight from the nib of the pencil Now we don't want it to be too harsh so I want this to flow nicely with just a delicate wash of color you can always add more color to it but you can't very easily take it away the watercolor paper that Stampin' Hat Up have now is a very it's called a fluid 100 paper so this is a little bit heavier here, so I'm just going to wash some of that out, use it on the other side and dilute that a little bit. With a clean brush, you can actually take that colour away. If you find that you've got it's too dark and you didn't want it that dark, you can push this around with a clean brush or you can dab it with a clean piece of kitchen roll or kitchen paper you can actually absorb some of that and take some of that strength away. So remember, just a tiny, tiny little dot of the pencil. These pencil, watercolour pencils, will last you an awful long while. Just dot those around and then spread them. So you haven't got too much intensity of colour. need to change the colour you can just squeeze some more water through on your brush nib and you've got a clean brush and you can just smooth some of those colours out that you need. 
watercolour paper is such that it won't pill, it won't actually, um, it won't damage the surface of the paper and it will allow your water brush to push that colour around quite gently. So there is my, there is my wash at the moment. You can't really see it picked up on the camera very well I'm afraid, but it's a very, very pale shade of blue considering we started off with this watercolour pencil. It's the Bermuda Bay. Okay, so you can see that was the strength of it, but we've watered that down nicely. Okay, so my brush is clean. I've squeezed some more water through it. I'm now going to give the owls a colour. So this is my early espresso pen. So again, I'm just going to take a little tiny, tiny, tiny piece of ink off the pencil and just push that round to give a pastel colour all over. Here I am working my water painter into the ink to get a concentrate of the dark colour on here to come back on the eyelids. a pop of colour and then squeeze the brush through and clean that. Here I've brought my base card back on and my banner that we cut earlier. This will be stuck flat on there using Tombow. For my owl image I'm going to bring some Stampin' Dimensionals. over to the side okay, and down a little bit just to give it some shape I think on this particular card because this is quite near to the, the bottom I think that might look nice coming over like so so if I'm going to place this here I need to support because this one's raised I need to support this piece here and lay this one on flat so my dim dimension will only be this end So for my, to finish my card, I've added three of our rhinestone basic jewels down the side here and one each on the end of the banner. Okay. To decorate our envelope here, I will be using a couple of scraps left over. Here is the piece from the bottom of the designer series paper that we cut off here when we trimmed it to size. And I will just trim that down a little bit further here. And this is the piece of card stock I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to cut that roughly to size and trim that off at the end. So that one can go onto the envelope and then this one will go over the top of it. So here's my Tombow adhesive.
and then the piece of the designer series paper that coordinates with our card. This is the front of the envelope decorated. Now we also have the other piece of designer series paper left over. And so I'm going to decorate the flap on here. So if I open this up and then I'm going to cover the flap with the liquid Tombow. card and an envelope decorated coordinating and also when you write the address on here you've got the coordination. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today. If this is your first visit to my channel please click on the subscribe button below, it is free and if you ring the bell too you'll be notified of future videos as I release them. My contact details will be at the end of the video and in the description below. Thanks again for joining me today and I hope to see you again here soon.